الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلام عليه. ما رسمت الرادس والسستس الإسلام. In the sense of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. He says in Allah تعالى that Allah سبحانه وتعالى يرضى لكم ثلاثة. There are three things that Allah expects of you. He loved that he performed these three things. And then he has forbidden. Or oh, there are three things that are not pleased by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within our deeds. What are the three that Allah expects of us? And what are the three that Allah does not expect of us? Please come forward. So many people are behind. There is no space. So the Prophet said, Yarda lakum an ta'abuduhu wa la tushiriku bihi shay'a. That Allah expect you, He like for you, love for you, that you should worship Him as the only one and do not join or associate partners with Him. And then at the psalm, that you come together with a chain, that chain you together, which is the Quran, and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the second. And the third, whoever Allah appoints to lead you, be he of any nature, any tribe, any country, any physics, you have to obey him for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and help him. And three, that Allah doesn't expect of you, but bite him. Too much question and then losing money or spending unnecessary. So understanding this hadith will make the compilation of this khutbah with the light of Barakah wa Ta'ala. Allah expect us that we worship Him and do not join partners with Allah. So our worship in everything, in our words, in our actions, in our intention, Everything that we do that has an intention as a worship should only be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to any idol or other deity. Our prayer, our fasting, our zakah, even slaughtering the lamb or animal and so on. All has to be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So no type of worship circumvallation of any house unless a house of Allah in Mecca. There are people today they worship the grave. They say the man or the person in this grave used to be a good person. So when he dies, they go there to seek from him. Worshipping. This is known as worship beside Allah. He who is dead needs you who is alive to pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him, to forgive him his sins, to admit him in paradise. Not you to go and seek from him. So if you do that, then you are worshipping him. So worshipping beside Allah is haram. You are making what is known as shirk. So all our worship, our prayer in any form has to be for only the creator who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second, Allah says, the Prophet says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we should come together and that which has to bring us together has to be the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa What Allah himself said, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُبُعُبًا وَقَبَائِلًا Is he Allah who has created you in tribes, created you differently. There are white, black, yellow and so on. These from this country, these from this town, he speak this language and so on. There are differences. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you are one brotherhood and that which should bring you together has to be the book of Allah, which is the word of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In this regard, you don't be a brother because we come from the same country. If we come from the same country, and you mistake or you make a mistake 
I have to correct you. Not because we come from the same country, but I want us to belong to one country, which is the country of Islam. So nothing should join you or bring you together if even you are from the same mother, biological, brother or sister, the only thing that can link you together is the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad In this regard, then we have to worship Allah in responding to the book and the Sunnah. So if we have any argument or we have any difference in our thoughts or in our worship, there is only one source and that source is joined within the book of Allah and the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As Allah says in that Al Quran, "In tanazatu fi shayin, if we have any difference, farujuu ila Allahi wa Rasul, you should turn or you should go back to Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Some of me say, they say that then why did Allah make us of different tribes and so on? Allah says, "Wala shahar buka la jala nasa umata wahida." Had your Lord wished, he would have made you, this Ummah, or the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, all to accept him, all to worship him. Then he said, But you keep on deferring, having difference within yourselves. Unless those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on. And he said, So this is why Allah has created you to have difference in your language, difference in your own way of life, but there is only one source that can bring you together. That is why sometimes if you visit a country which is not your country, on your arrival, right, you go to the mosque and say, Assalamu alaikum, you find a smile on the person that you say salam to. Because he see a different person coming to his country and they say to him, Assalamu alaikum, he is happy to see his brother, he is happy to see his sister. And this is very natural because of the deen of the Prophet Muhammad. <coughs> and whenever we have an argument, any difference or disagreement in our deen, we have to go back to the Quran and go back to the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. That is why sometimes in our worship, let's take prayer for example. Some of us, we pray in our standing position, we bend down, we kneel, and then we prostrate. But we have some differences in our way of prayer. Some of us leave our hands when we stand. Others also hold across the chest. Some, when we make, we bow down, we bow down and then we're looking up. Others looking straight, others looking down. We have these differences. Why all these differences? Is because sometimes we follow our own understanding. So there's only one understanding. That is why Ali ibn Abi Talib who said, had Islam dealt with the mind when the Prophet said, you can wipe over your socks, he would have commanded us to wipe beneath the feet because we step down with the foot but Islam say wipe above the foot so he says it's not because of the way you understand or your way of thinking but because Islam is Rahman it's mercy Allah has made everything easy for us so that each and every human being can follow and it might be difficult for any one of us. So when we come together, we come together, we know why we are together, and we know what has bounded us together, then we don't have any difference. Then he said again, whenever someone is appointed, he has ever said in a hadith, no matter where he comes from, no matter how he looks, what is important is that Islam is a deal of unity. So if you have a leader, the leader is the one from who you take instructions. And the instructions that he's giving you is not of his own. They are instructions that deals with the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad We we'll give an example. Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu, one of the first among the Sahaba to accept Islam. 
Once the Prophet Muhammad saw him lying on the ground and they were rolling, he said, what is this? He said, I am impure, for instance, if you have intercourse, but I don't have water. So I'm trying to clean myself, the whole body, with water. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him that it's enough for you to do this. Then he taught him how to make tayammu. Tayammu, to make wudu with the sand. Hit the ground, your face, and then your hands to the wrist. If you don't have water, it is enough. You are pure, you are clean, you can pray, you can read Quran, you can do anything. When you get water, then you wash the body. So after the death of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it came after Abu Bakr anhu in the days of Umar al Khattar anhu when he was the leader of the Muslims, Amin al He had in his understanding that you cannot purify your body unless with water whenever you have intercourse, irrespective of the situation. It means even in the absence of water, you have to wait for water. So when he said this, Ammar ibn Yasser said, no, Amir al you can use sand. He said, are you challenging me? He said, no, I obey you as an Amir. But I heard from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Umar al-Khattar al who at that time, he allowed the decision of Am 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 Ammar to rule. That does not cease he from being Amir. But because Ammar told him the truth, and he cannot lie him. So this is what we, he understands. I follow you, I obey you, Amir. If you say I should understand that, you cannot do that. But what I saw, practically on myself, is what the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said. You can purify yourself with the sun. Another example. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, one of the closest to the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam heard from Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, one of the muhaddithin who used to listen directly from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, saying that black dog is a say, Satan. Ibn Abbas said, and that was after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Oh Abu Huraira, what is the difference between black, red, white dog? Dog is a dog. Then Abu Huraira said, Oh Ibn Abbas, I will not argue with you in what I heard with my own ears from the Prophet Muhammad So we have to understand that even the Sahaba, they had arguments, they had differences within themselves. But when the truth comes, in the truth there is light. That's why Imam Ahmad Rahimahullah said, accept the truth if even it's from a kafir. They say, how can a kafir say the truth? He said, inna lillahi nura. Because the truth has light. When someone says the truth, there is light in the truth. Then finally, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is light for us, backbiting. Because that will divide the Ummah. And spending unnecessarily. And asking what is not important. Brothers, as says in Islam, with all this, the Prophet is saying that anything that will break the oneness of Muslims, the unity of Muslims, we have to abstain. We know that this will break between you and me. I abstain. You hear from someone, he said that I said about you, you don't have to believe. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in When the wicked come to you with a what? With an information. He calls someone who is going to backbite or who is now being a hypocrite that is a wicked person. It might be true. It might be true. You don't know the condition in which that person was when he said that. And you don't know what is the understanding of the person who is saying. That's why... <coughs> The Amir Muminin, Omar bin Abdul Aziz, Allah, someone came to him and said, Someone said bad words about you, that you are this and that. 
Then he said, wait for me. I put on my clothes and we go to him. Then he said, Amin Mumini, it's okay. I would not like to go. Because you see, when the story comes, the person who will tell the story has his own understanding about what you are saying. What he sees or understands about your story is different from what you have said. That is why someone said that a person came to him that had told him, you know, brother, this said that you have done this or you have said this and that about him. Then he said, ask him, what did you tell him before he told you that? Then the person said, you know, it is like food. If you don't give, you don't get spice. <laughs> so the person also has to say something in order to get that information. That is why the best thing is to ignore. The best thing is to ignore. Because oneness of the ummah is more important than your iman. Jibreel alayhi salam and angels were passing, flying over a city. They saw someone every time he's in sujood. And in the city there was sin. People were committing sin. Then Allah became angry with the city and said, Jibreel, go and destroy the city. Say, oh Allah, whenever I pass by the city, there is someone who is very pious, always making sujood. Allah said, start the punishment with him. Jibreel became surprised. Why? Because he sees people going astray. And he says nothing. Thinking that he alone is okay. Brothers and sisters in Islam. Let's not look at the Muslims who are going astray. Or those who don't pray. Or those who are doing things that are not good. And think that we are better so they can go to hell. No. It is your responsibility. The Prophet said the Muslim is mirror to his fellow Muslim. If you see yourself in the mirror, have stains on your body, what do you do? You wipe them out because they are dirty. The same applies to when you see your brother doing wrong. You have to try to correct him. But not to allow him to go until he is destroyed. When he destroyed, or he is destroyed, you are destroyed. They say the Muslim is destroyed. If you see Muslims drinking, doing bad things, and then you say, oh, me, I'm okay. No. This is devilish way of thinking. You have to be sad. Have sorrow. Because why? Because it is part of you. The Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad. And this refers us to what happened recently. A few days back in France. We are all talking. Why did they do that? Or are they the ones? Whatever the situation is we are thinking. We are Muslims. You see, when a Muslim commits a crime, whatever you call it, the whole Ummah has to answer. That is too much. When a Christian does it, you don't hear anything. I'm not justifying anything at all. Because in Islam, we are not allowed to kill anyone. You only defend yourself. It's not my responsibility when I hear people insulting the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, then I eliminate them from the world. No. Whatever you do, even in the life, in the days of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they called him a liar. They called him names. They tried to kill him. They tried to eliminate him. It's because they have to challenge their religion. A religion that is not being challenged, it means that the religion is not pure. But you see that they're challenging the religion, they're fighting against the religion, they know that you are on the right path. So we are not saying that you have to kill anyone, whatever the situation is. But we cannot have to carry the responsibility of every crime that has been committed. When Israel went to bomb Gaza within a few days, thousands, hundreds of thousands are dead. When they ask why, is it was a mistake. When drones fly over Pakistan, Afghanistan, and kill a whole family, it is a mistake. And the media is shut. And we say, Samina wa Atana. Astaghfirullah, God has spoken. But when a Muslim say, Allah wa Akbar, maybe he's not even praying. They say the whole Muslim Ummah has committed a crime. So we know for ourselves,